Okay, good morning traders and welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Today is Wednesday, March 20th, FOMC day. Good morning to everyone in the room. Uh, Jaya, good morning to you. Peter says, hi, Mike. Uh, thanks for your levels from last Thursday's webinar uh, for the SPX. Cheers. He says they were perfect uh, to the pip down to 28.04 and just above 28.47. Spot on. Impressive call. Uh, do you think there's more upside to go? Peter, first of all, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, they're not my levels, man. The market's levels, I'm just helping you find them. Uh, we'll definitely uh, take a look at the SPX. I'm going to add it to the, to the chart uh, or to the list. Look, Pete, I think... I do think there's some upside to go. Just a quick note in case you're holding something right now. I think there's some, there might be some more upside to go, but the general risk I still think is failure. Note that the daily chart is still marking divergence on a third reference point. Um, intraday momentum is kind of tired. So we'll come back to this in a moment, but um, we'll uh, um, essentially look for that slope and 28.12 is still kind of a level I want to see break to the downside. Hello, Michael. Hope all is going well with you. Iman, great to see you. Uh, have you already seen in your experience such a long period of low volatility in FX. Marco, man, uh, I have. It's very frustrating. And it seems, uh, what I can say is in the past when this has happened, just as all hope is lost and just as you're throwing your hands up in the air and saying, you know, to hell with this, there's nothing going on, that's when the explosion happens. So as frustrating as the conditions can be, guys, just know, <laughs> I hate to be corny or give you movie lines, but it's always darkest right before the dusk, right? So um, we have to kind of just make sure that we have all our levels and all our setups squared away uh, because when markets do turn, they're going to move and it's going to move pretty rapidly. So we want to make sure we're ready. Uh, so for the menu today, guys, I do want to cover uh, all the dollar crosses. Uh, we'll go over the FOMC um, expectations as we always do before these releases. Uh, DXY is on the menu, Euro, Aussie, Kiwi, Dollar Yen. Uh, we have to hit crude. Really nice turn, guys. It missed our target by five cents. But price action speaking, we got to listen. Uh, I'll come back to the SPX here for Pete. Uh, we do want to hit on gold. Uh, and if there are any other questions or trade setups you guys want to look at, uh, we'll hit sterling. Uh, feel free to throw them on the message board at any time. Okay. Uh, let's jump right in. So I went over this uh, with you guys in the uh, Daily FX webinar on Monday. So if you were... Uh, in that webinar, excuse us, but we're going to go over it one more time because I just want to show the reflection of what we're expecting. Um, first of all, here's the last dot plot, okay? it's Let me take a step back. This is not your run-of-the-mill interest rate decision. These are your quarterly projections. So we're going to get updated quarterly assessments as it pertains to growth, as it pertains to employment, as it pertains to inflation. Um, you know, last time we did get a little bit of a, of a shift um, in the September projections to the December projections, but the biggest gain, the biggest focus will be on um, the dot plot, okay? Two things that you want to focus on. A, the distribution, obviously, for 2019. As we noted on Monday, current market expectations. This is Fed fund futures, what markets are pricing in as far as interest rates moving forward. I just jump right forward to the December of this year to see what markets are, are pricing in for the end of this year. And if you look at this, 74% chance that we're going to be right at where we are at rates right now at two and a quarter to two point five percent so that means market consensus is giving you a 74 percent probability that there will be no change in the interest rate in fact almost a 25 percent chance for an interest rate cut and a one percent chance for a 25 basis point hike so basically the market is betting we're sitting right here all the way through the year now, the Fed dot plot is not saying that, okay? They're still showing, you know, expectations range of a 3% clip. So that's two more hikes this year. So, look, the focus has to be here and on the longer-running central tendencies. If you see that shift from 3, 2.75%, uh, which is kind of where we're sitting right now, um, lower, or if you see this, just lower. Markets are betting that they're going to shift this lower. That's what the Fed fund futures are suggesting, that the markets are suggesting that today when we see that updated dot plot, we're going to see a couple of members move down their expectations for a hold at the current rate. Um, you know, definitely something to pay attention to heading into the release. Uh, what else do I want to say on this? Uh, the assessment we got, I guess I'll share this with you as well, guys. Um, so we have affiliation with Prattle. I've told you guys, I've shared this research with you before. Uh, who 
they specialize in basically choreographing or grading uh, central bank rhetoric. And here's their notes on today's FOMC decision. I'll just read it to you uh, really quick here. Uh, the analysis says, had Fed policymakers kept to their plans from late last year, this week's policy meeting would likely focus on the first of three rate hikes in 2019. Needless to say, that is certainly not the discussion anymore. Although economic data has remained solid, signs of weakness in the labor market coupled with financial market concerns have stalled the Fed's rate hike cycle and pushed sentiment to the Dover side of neutral. As a result, this week's FOMC meeting will mo almost certainly result in policymakers holding rates. The bigger question is what the summary of economic projections uh, will have to say. In particular, policymakers will may revise the dot plot down yet again, this time dropping the central tendency of two rate hikes in 2019 to just one. By the way, guys, just a quick note, that would still be off market consensus. But having said that, the note says the market appears to have priced in expectations of this downward revision. So another projection of two hikes in 2019 could be viewed as hawkish. So basically what they're saying, guys, is if we get this release, and by the way, here's the link. Everyone in the room should have this. I'm gonna put it in the chat box. Uh, that's the link to the Fed page, okay? When the release comes out at two o'clock, you're gonna wanna scroll right down. It's gonna be right here under the March read. You're gonna click on the PDF uh, for the updated economic assessment. Uh, but the last one that we looked at from, from December, again, if we get this same exact dot plot, um, the analysis suggests that should be construed as um, hawkish. So what does that mean? Well, Pete, for you, that would mean stocks may take a little bit of a hit. It would be a good catalyst to offer the pullback that we're looking for. Um, for the dollar, that actually may be uh, bullish. Because again, at the end of the day, markets are betting there's going to be no interest rate hikes. If they come back the same and they're still pressing two hikes this year, well, then the market, you know, that mismatch in expectations may fuel, um, may fuel some, dollar, some dollar strength. So it really, you know, devil's in the details. It's not going to be your run of the mill. Did they hike or not? We're going to have to wait for the policy meeting or the policy presser rather, where we get Jerome Powell really... Uh, taking some Q&A, and a lot of times we'll get a little bit more information disseminated there. So keep the powder dry today, guys. But the, you know, the uh, possibility for it fueling some volatility is definitely there. All right, with that out of the way, <laughs> let's jump into price action. Here's what matters heading into the release. So yesterday I showed you guys this. We've been following the same exact chart. There was no change to any of the levels uh, or anything. Basically, just had a new low to change that fib, but you know, we're basically coming into basic slope support for the DXY. So if we're gonna bounce, March open supports 96.22, you know, you kind of need to break 95.83 to even shift higher, and that would be an objective break of the weekly range highs. But, you know, it's hard to press shorts at these levels. Here's the DXY on the daily chart. So we're at the 50% retracement of the 2019 range, an objective level, okay? Um, and we're governed on the top side by the 100-day moving average, which basically caught resistance earlier today. So uh, before we jump into that, here's just a quick look at the daily chart, or the weekly. Remember where we turned last week, just pips from that key 618. And our concern was that we still might get a spike into here before turning. The end of the day, if we push below the low we close, the 200, uh, excuse me, the 200-week moving average, you know, that level, basically like 9560s, would shift the focus for a larger decline towards 95. Um, and that's sort of your key support in your term. So the bigger picture, right? And we've been marking divergence all up into these highs. The slope from the 2011 lows is still holding as resistance all throughout last year, all throughout this year. This is the world as it pertains to the dollar right now. DXY in the daily. Again, the daily chart, no change there. Looks pretty clean, okay? Um, you're sitting at support, monthly opens right here, 618's right here. So it's got to get through quite a bit of support, guys, to move lower. The other thing I wanted to note with the DXY is not only do you have the monthly open and the 618 there, but this is also your objective monthly opening range lows. Okay, the monthly opening range low comes in at 9607, the 618's at 9605. So if we break below this, Man, that's like objective stuff, looking lower, 200-day moving average, initial target. And then again, at the low day close for the year, that comes in at 95, uh, 95.55, 95 
really nice levels. But it's 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 a chore, okay? It's a big ask to get through this, which is why, you know, if we get that dollar recovery today, if we get that blow off, if they hold two interest rates or even just lower it to one, still that's more than the market's expecting, might see a little bit of recovery. Uh, so that's where we have to focus on the near-term chart, and here's what it looks like. As I always tell you guys, I hate these real sharp, you know, uh, gradients. They don't typically give you, you know, decent plays, but here's the breakout. And here's the pullback. If this thing stalls out at 96.20s into the U.S. trade session or even into the FOMC level, it still could rip higher, okay? Basic break of trend line resistance, test the support, then move off. Note also that that converges on basic slope. Here's the January low. Here's the February low. That trend line converges on former slope resistance. So a nice lateral level and Lo and behold, it all converges on the weekly low, 96.30, 96.29. Monthly opens 96.22. Again, 96.07, 96.05. Big region watch. Big region watch, right? So how do we play this? Again, if you get that jackknife lower and you see failure into one of these regions, that would be sort of a, a, a gift exhaust trade, in my humble opinion, to play the recovery. Ultimately, we still want to sell that recovery, but that would be the play from a price point standpoint. If dollar just rips, right, they come out and all of a sudden there's still two hikes and everyone just thinks, oh my goodness, markets need to readjust, DXY rips, I really wouldn't fight it. I really think you could get a larger recovery, maybe even back as high as 97.17. OK, the, the, how pent up this thing is. And it's been a pretty, you know, decent drop, I would say, from the highs of the month. Uh, you could get a larger recovery. here, So don't try to fight it. Don't try to get cute. Uh, the play is to either play the recovery off through here or if it rips higher to look for exhaustion up here. Now, if it just breaks lower and collapses through our levels, it's going to be hard to play. If you're not pre-positioned, um, you know, just as a side note, guys, not a trade recommendation per se, but my humble opinion, I favor euro um, in the favor in 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 the event of dollar weakness. Uh, I favor Aussie in the event of dollar strength, and that's pretty much one of the only trades that I really like the dollar strength in. Uh, maybe even dollar CAD. We'll look at that low, uh, you know later in the session, but uh, Aussie I think is your best bet if the dollar does rip higher. Um, like I said, if you get a breakdown here, it's, it, you might not get an opportunity to get in. The play would be a breakthrough support, a test back as resistance somewhere along that slope or even back into the monthly open. That would be the entry for the move lower. Ultimately, like I said, the low day close is 95.55. But long story short, take everything I just said, sum it up in a bubble, DXY sitting at monthly support into the FOMC. Look for a reaction here. Questions, comments on DXY before we move off. Also, one thing to note, guys, again, objective stuff. Take a step back. This thing has just set a clean weekly opening range. Uh, here's the open. You set a low. You push the high. You test a little bit below the low, but you come right back into monthly open resistance or weekly open resistance, rather, and you're basically holding a weekly opening range right above support. Again, these are plays that typically produce decent moves. So Marco, add that to the fact that we're seeing low volatility, add that to the fact that we're seeing um, markets really starting to stir up. Did you see the price action yesterday? I mean, I was out yesterday, guys, but you did see, um, you know, headlines that, oh, the China deal is falling apart, markets rip or drop and one way or the other, and then everything just kind of pairs back. So I do think um, the po possibility for a decent play here could materialize today. Okay, let's move on. That's number one, DXY. Number two, here's Euro. So uh, for the Euro setup, also a, a, a trade that's basically holding very clean levels. Here's what we look like. Again, the weekly chart, guys, no change. The fact that we recovered back above 113, that's what the focus is going to be on into the close of the week. Basic long-term trend line resistance is what we need to see breach. Here it is from last year's highs that we made back in March. Some nice symmetry there. Close above this would certainly suggest that we did put in a more significant low in the euro there. Uh, until we clear this level, until we clear these highs, we have to be cautious. 114, 114.20 is sort of the region you need to see break uh, to get this thing going. Okay, so the weekly chart, not much to say here. Watch the weekly close uh, in the aftermath of all this. Daily chart showing us coming into resistance right now. 
1370s level we were watching. That's the high day close from February. So last month's high day close. You also have the 100 day moving average right there. Okay, so we're heading towards near term resistance. Um, also, wouldn't you know, is that also the monthly open? Open is 1370. It is also the monthly open. Stop traffic. Okay. So here's also the monthly open. So you're heading into resistance for Euro. Either way you look at it, DXY at support, you're at resistance, heading to the FOMC. Look for a reaction. Look for a reaction. Keep in mind, guys, seriously, we've only had one down day in the Euro since the 8th of the month. So pent up. Something's going to happen here. Uh, here's the intraday chart, and here's what we've been following. We're testing resistance right now. Uh, 786 retracement of the drop. Here's the chart uh, on the intraday daily chart. We're talking about this level, right? We're holding that right now. Intraday, here it is. 1380, uh, 1367, 786 retracement, median line, right? We haven't really seen a material break above this yet. Just above that, there's that level I quoted you at 1390, I think, yesterday. Yeah, 1390, right? So that's just basic trend line resistance. That's nothing fancy from January high. So it's yearly trend line resistance. Guys, I love the setup, okay? If it pans, breaks lower, the only adjustment we need to make is the new high that we just registered. And again, we have no way of knowing this is a high, but react to it as it stretches, just so you know the downside target if we break. But, um, you know, you're heading into a region of resistance. 1390, you know, 1367, this is still risk. Risk. So if we pop higher, all more the power to it, guys. 1420, like I said, that's your 618 retracement from the decline off the highs of January 19th. Yearly open resistance, 1445, and that converges on the 75% line up here. Ideal scenario, dollar rips off support. This thing tanks towards the median line, holds, and then rips face. Um, you know, it all, but God, that's just... You know, that's just hope, right? Which is not a strategy. Uh, our focus needs to be on what these guys come out with today. Again, devil's in the details. That godforsaken dot plot everyone's so obsessed with. Um, in the end of the day, might drive near term price action here. So, long story short, 12.94, we're going to set that as our near-term bullish invalidation level, okay? If it drops and we materially break below this, that would not only invalidate the December low day close, which has been a decent pivot, but it's also an objective break of the weekly opening range lows and that 75, 25% uh, line or, or uh, median line, whatever you want to call it, right? So, if we get below this, I do think you get a, you know, a deeper drop, 12.50, 12.48, just a soft target. But... For now, that's sort of where I want, want to see Euro weakness hold if we are going to make a test of yearly open resistance. Questions on Euro? All right. Aussie, number three. So, um, <clears throat> here's Aussie. This thing got whiplashed really hard last night, too. Um, here's what the update looked like on the intraday page. We were holding above this slope support, and uh, what can I want to say? What do I want to say at this? As I said, I wanted to see this thing break. Um, and if we had moved below 75, I noted 75.75, which was the 38.2 uh, retracement here. If we saw a break below this, I thought that would have validated a larger decline towards this key zone. You have the yearly open 70.42, and then you have the 6.8 70.47. Sweet spot. Nice pivot in price, all the good stuff, right? Look what happened. The 50% caught support on that spill. Even though we broke the confluence region, you saw acceleration, which is exactly what you want to see. Um, but the, the the bounce here and the and the rebound right back through the weekly open kind of has me sitting on the sidelines right now. So look, it's still in the downtrend. We readjusted the slope. Actually, Jamie's working with this slope on the on the swing trade, guys. Um, 
on the swing charts. So he was right on with this slope. Uh, I just did mine yesterday. So, you know, the levels are very clean. It could still rip back into resistance. Remember early in the week, guys, on the update, we were looking for 71.15, 71.24, or even 71.40 for short off one of these three levels. We came into the first level, failed. Really nice move into slope support. This was key support near term. The downside break still has me thinking we do make a move towards the median line or maybe towards the yearly open. But this needs to fail, like, basically here at the low we close. Okay? As it stands, I was looking at this earlier. I don't want to clutter the charts too much for you guys. As it stands, you are kind of testing a push through the 618 right now. So... With all the event risk on tap, I'm not going to sit here and kind of, you know, try to cue this in a corner. If it gets higher, you look for failure in your 7115. The figure, if it gets through that, I just don't want to touch this right now because there needs to be some sort of reaction out here. If we clear the 618, I don't, you know, see why this thing wouldn't just rip. So this is my favorite one I'll be watching in the in the event of dollar strength. If this thing can fail or it gives me some sort of near-term signal, some sort of exhaustion point failure at 70-something. Uh, on the FOMC ahead of essentially the weekly highs with a stop against the weekly highs, that would be the short. Okay. And again, the big level for me is 7042, 7047, yearly open support, 618 retracement of the near term advance. Make sense? Got thrown off by this a little, this near term uh, move, but the levels that we're focused on heading into the release are still, are still, are still unchanged, right? And at the end of the day, no matter what that just happened, this thing is literally sitting at the monthly open. So yes, Marco, you're not the only one feeling the pinch of um, you know this low volatility environment, but things will change, and they tend to change rapidly. Questions on Aussie. Here's the bigger picture, just to give you a quick reference. Um, as I always tell you guys, if the intraday charts are or the weekly charts aren't provided for you on that update, they will always be on the previous update. I take a lot of work to make sure that that is always available for you. So, you know, looking at the daily chart, still highlighting the same levels. That outside daily reversal that we made in late February uh, gives you 71.40, and that was the level that we highlighted in the intraday chart as sort of really the level we need to get through to kind of clear the way for uh, a larger advance. Okay, see if we can't get failure ahead of 7140 if this is going to work. Marco says, my account is feeling the pinch too. Yep, I, I hear you. I hear you. All, all uh, in the life of a trader, my friend. So we have to roll with the punches, make sure more than ever risk management is as paramount at this point. And again, don't force the move, guys. You know, revenge trading is something I was, <laughs> my pre in my early years, was notorious for. Even the guys on the desk knew. Um, we, we want to make sure that when things are getting like this, we're more prepped than anything. Okay. He says, definitely agree. Right on, my man. All right. So, uh, Kiwi, a little bit of a different setup with Kiwi. So, here's Aussie, right? Uh, a little bit of a different setup with Kiwi in that, well, first, I do want to show you the Kiwi weekly chart just to remind you again of the insane contraction that we've been in since the start of the year. The January opening range is intact. The quarterly opening range is intact. The consolidation range off the yearly highs and lows is intact. This thing's going to make a move. And, you know, when it does, I just want to be ready to do something. End of the day, 67 support, 69.30 is resistance. That's the range we need to break. Critical resistance is just under 71, right? Uh, key support is just above 65. That's last year's low week reversal close. So, the levels are all mapped out. We just need this thing to give us a move already, you know? Uh, here's the daily chart. Like, if you feel compelled to do something here, you know, play it off of the extremes. I've been telling you that for the last couple of weeks. Selling your resistance, holding your support. But right last couple of days, we've just been sitting right in the middle of the range. So I really, uh, you know, I'm hard-pressed to do anything here. The intraday chart, interestingly enough, Looks like this. Oops. So, here's the update from last night. Okay. The one thing that we were looking at last night, and I was telling you, hey, 
we essentially set a very clean weekly opening range right above slope support. Now, oftentimes, again, this is one of those really sharp acute angles. I don't really like the slope and the gradient is so sharp, but I have to be objective. One point, two point speculative, three point confirms. So despite my dislike of the fact that it's such a sharp angle, eh, if it breaks, probably should give you a decent drop. Well, it did. And not only did it give you a decent drop, it even broke the weekly opening range. Now, what the heck is this? Again, if it's going to hold, guys, we kind of need to see failure pretty darn close. Otherwise, we could rip right into the yearly high day close again. 68.90 wouldn't be outside the realm of possibility. But, you know, this thing needs to get tired, you know, basically right around here. Otherwise, you're looking for a test of the objective range highs. You can go right back up into this region again. So, look, you know, this China, these headlines, guys, and these moves that you get, even if they are a break of technical support, when you see the market kind of react like that, it just tells you there was really low participation behind it. The market might have reacted and jumped on the fact that there was, you know, a breakdown in China deal talks. Um, even though it charged a break of resistance, we can't just kind of omit it. If this fails here, it still would suggest that we do have a possible place to the downside. Uh, that said, guys, I, you know, I was hoping to see some follow through here last night. I want to see how this reacts today. Ideal scenario, again, my humble opinion, this thing kind of rips towards the high day close or even towards the weekly high, it then fails for a move lower. Um, but ultimately, you know, I kind of be a little bit more interested playing the Aussie if we do get dollar strength. But it's basically a similar setup. Questions on the New Zealand dollar. Still holding the yearly range, consolidation range off that December high. Patience pays. Okay, next up, <laughs> the abomination. Is anyone trading dollar yen? Um, I promised you I was going to put a chart out, so I did uh, on dollar yen. You guys know my feelings on this, but look, you know, it's important because it's a, it typically is a very strong reactor for FOMC days. So we don't want to kind of just omit it because we don't like it. At the end of the day, we have to be objective. Here's dollar yen. Um, you know, the weekly charts. So this is my region, my reason of not touching dollar yen for basically the last couple of months. It's, I have no clue what to do here, guys. I'm being completely honest with you. Um, you know, the only thing I could highlight on the weekly chart is key resistance into the 2018 open. It's 1160, uh, 1260, excuse me. Key support, while well, it's still the 10780 region, even though we plowed through it into the open, um, you know, it's still a key region of support and it converges on slope. So that's just the bigger picture I want to show you for dollar yen. Anything in between here is is fair game, which is insane, but <laughs> that's just dollar yen. Here's on the on the daily chart. I posted this on the intraday charts on Tuesday night because, um, or on Monday night because it looked like it would be something I might want to look at into the FOMC. And the only thing that's kind of interesting here is that you have a monthly opening range right above basic slope support. It's not the cleanest two point touch. That you know, discount that for whatever you want. Um, but price is sitting like right at the 100 and 200 day moving averages. You see this? This line you see in gray? Well, that happens to be the monthly open. So you set a monthly opening range. You're sitting at the monthly open and price is consolidating between the 100 and 200 day moving averages. I mean, this is like, man, this is like contraction, like no one's business, right? Like something could really happen here. Um, Eman says, as always, it's not me who's trading it. Good luck for anyone who is, right, Eman? She's talking about dollar yen. Uh, I feel the sentiment, but something may happen here today. So I just want to note the critical nature of where we are. For the last five days, we've been trading in you know, this batch between the 100 and 200 day moving averages, monthly open, and just a near-term consolidation, right? Ain't no, no reason they make things more complicated than they are. Boom. It's not the cleanest. But just something to take into account, right? Here's dollar yen on the intraday. Okay, so there's that consolidation I just showed you on the daily chart we just added. Uh, the downslope looks decent with this pitchfork, a modified fork off the highs here. And um, a 618 and overnight trade was right with the weekly opening range high. Obviously, dollar yen is going to rip through and pull back. Uh, the classic throw over. Um, 
But despite everything we just added, monthly open, 200-day, 100-day moving, all that good stuff, we're also sitting at the weekly open now, guys. If the word indecision means anything to any of you, look at dollar yen. You should understand what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> so, you know, sub 11.76, the risk is for a deeper cut towards the median line. Uh, above 11.86, I would watch the highs uh, that we made last week, specifically the upper parallel. Um, and until we clear that range, at least, guys, there's really nothing left to be said here on dollar yen. Very sensitive to yields, should be sensitive to any major shift to interest rate expectations from the dot plot that we get today. Uh, but largely speaking, this thing has been in consolidation, has been range bound, has been lateral. So anyone who's trading a dollar yen position looking for 114 or 110, good luck, because I'm not with you on that one. Uh, we need to get some validation with at least a breakout of this near term consolidation off the highs. Um, and that's not asking for much, guys. It's asking for a move either below 111 or a move above 111.70. I mean, until that happens, you know, play the range if you feel compelled. But this thing needs to clear something here for us to get some guidance. Questions on dollar yen? I'll leave this up to uh, Jamie uh, later in his session for those of you who really feel aggressive about it. But... Here are the levels from last night, no change. Key levels are still in play. We did break weekly open resistance, but we, we failed right at that 618 and pulled back again. So the levels are right on point still. And again, I would rather see the downside move, just me humbly. Um, it just depends what, uh, what the Fed's got for us today. All right, next. Let's take a quick look at Sterling. And then we'll jump into the commodities and uh, some of the risk currencies. So uh, British pound looks like this, just ahead of FOMC. Uh, the break that we were looking for has materialized. It just happened a little bit later than expected. So if you guys remember the previous update on sterling, uh, we'll come back to crude in a moment. Oops. Where's my last sterling update? It's right here. So there was no need to update this really since the Sunday open because nothing happened since uh, until now, right? Here's what we looked like at the open of the week. We are talking about 3409 being major resistance. We kind of failed at 3363 again last week. Um, and basic support, 3121, that's really our near-term bullish inval. If we break that, I think you see a move back towards 2985, which is the bigger move. Uh, that's the bigger pivot that we played off of here, the breakthrough, 618 retracement out of the entire advance, really sweet spot. Um, also, the, the objective monthly opening range lows, it's, it's loaded. So here's the move, right? You saw that 25% line hold is resistance, weekly open hold is resistance. Here's the move. Kind of need to see this start to materialize lower. Remember, the update gave you 1321, but that's because it converted or converged on slope. Now, you know, this is kind of the, the region you want to see as resistance. If we break higher, guys, watch for that low or if we rebound. Watch for that slope uh, to, for failure. Uh, if we hold the March open, I do think you see the, the bigger drop. Again, a favored play in the scenario of dollar strength. Uh, it is not a longer term play. Longer term, as you guys know, I am constructive sterling. Uh, but the way that we rallied, where we rallied, and how we turned, we talked about this last week, was pretty important. Daily chart for sterling. This is why we started to turn bearish to begin with. Um, this is a parallel of the same slope we've been following from last year's lows. Extended off the highs, we probed through it last month, failed, converged on the July high, we probed through it again this month, and failed on building divergence. A third, um, not a third, but those still two reference points never really gave us the spill lower. So here's the pullback. You know, even that 2990 level, even that, you know, would only constitute, actually, I need to shift that a little bit higher for the new high. So 130 would constitute at 618 of the entire near-term advance from the yearly open. Um, and that would still, you know, not even be an invalidation of the monthly opening range. So first things first, the peaks, the, the area of where we're turning from and how we're turning is very welcomed. Uh, at this point, now that we've broken near-term down uptrend support, rather, uh, the focus would need to be lower below 
Typically, it would be the weekly open, but now that we're back below the March open, I want to see resistance ahead of that. I don't want to even see us get this high. Um, 31.21, 30.50, near-term targets. Key support, again, let me adjust this 6.18 for the new high. Just a couple pips higher from 29.92 into 130. All right. Any questions on pound? Again, event risk on this one just as bad, so we <laughs> need to be aware. I don't think, uh, as far as I can, as far as I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone in the room, but I don't think there's any major uh, Brexit event risk at least scheduled for this week. So keep your eye on price action. All right, and that is the rest of the dollar majors. Um, anyone trading dollar CAD is the only thing we didn't cover. This will be number seven, and then we'll hit commodities and uh, equities. Really quick, I just want to update on dollar CAD. Um, uh, Marco saying yes with Jamie. Oh, right on. Yeah, our, yeah, we're, that's, that's right. So here's what. Um, Here's what I'm looking at, at least. The thing is this, with the rally that we just saw, um, you know, thank God it didn't, you know, get through the weekly opening range highs. This was encouraging. Again, this data nonsense, this is kind of beating to its own drum right now, but um, the larger play for this one, guys, I still think is for, you know, that move lower. Yesterday's candle did concern me. It did concern me. Again, I was out yesterday when I came back and I saw, this reaction, especially because it was pips off the 618, something like this would typically think, oh, okay, you're in for a bigger recovery. Um, but I think you know we still have to be as objective as possible here. So let me just redo that 618. I fixed it here, okay. Uh, bear with me one sec, guys. Just want to see what this looks like. <laughs> okay. So it's the same levels. So remember, so uh, let me take a step back. You guys remember this chart? This is the same exact chart we've been working with since last week, uh, since the start of the month, actually. Um, the breakout turned us bullish. 134.37 was our major, major level. This looked like it was about to rip out and just destroy everyone. Here's the recovery, shift the focus lower. Here's the median line support. Remember early in the week, the focus for us was look for a rally to sell. Here's what dollar cad looked like uh, earlier this week. So we were looking for a short off 33.98 was sort of the sweet spot. Uh, we didn't get it. Here's the breakdown, 32.90, 32.48. We turned at 32.50, 32.51. Okay, so it came right shy of that. That was the nice 618 in the reversal. So this is my concern right now. You know, you see this 25% line hold with such fervor and it's confluent support with the 618. Typically, I would think this is bullish. But what I want to tell you guys is because it was prompted by some sort of fluke, some sort of headline that crossed, and because the market took it all back, that's why I'm not really buying the fact that this is a legitimate bounce off support. If it sounds like I'm talking on both sides of my mouth, guys, <laughs> this is what the gist is. My humble opinion is it still moves lower. The reaction that we got yesterday, if I was to look at this unknowingly from the, what happened on the headlines, I would think higher. I would think higher. So I'm just being a completely uh, upfront. Um, the fact that it was prompted by some, you know, unknown, foreseen, nonsense headline um, has me thinking that we're still basically looking for the same trade at the start of the week. Okay, I still want to see a break lower here. Is act is going to challenge critical support, critical support down here. And this is your hundred percent extension at this point. Look at my crosshair on the right, guys, on the daily chart. Okay, so if it's just two equal legs down, even if it's just a correction, you're still looking for 31.90. The 200-day moving average right now is around 31.80. Monthly open support, objective range, 
right around 3172 and stop traffic slope support from last year's low is right there as well. So the whole objective since this turn and break lower was for us to tag this major key area of support. This is really what I want to assess to see what's going to happen with the longer term picture in, in dollar cad. If it breaks below this, I think this thing could hit 3050 really quick. Um, until it does, that's the critical support barrier. Um, at the end of the day, because of what happened, also the only thing I would say is if we break the objective weekly range highs, just let it go. You know, if we clear if we clear 3365, I don't even want to I don't even want to play the long side. I want to see what happens up here. It may it may fail again at that 75% line. I don't know. Was a decent pivot here? Was a decent pivot here? We broke through here and accelerated, and we accelerated on the decline. So objectively, if this thing rips the weekly opening range, let's see what happens here. Okay, so you know, do we get shaken out because of what happened last night? I don't know. If you're holding, if you're on the swing side of things, no. Your stop was 33.55. You just, you know, there was a saving grace with this turn here. But we really do need things to start to you know, start to hold resistance here. Momentum looks good. Nothing's rallying above 70 or 60 even on this last recovery or even since the start of the week. Um, but don't let your risk be anything higher than basically like Friday's high or this, this week's high, max on the short. Questions, comments, concern on dollar cad. Here's the weekly chart, by the way. And there's that 34, 37 level that we talked about for so long. Such a critical region. Does the turn give us the challenge of support? Hopefully today will be the tell. Uh, don't forget one other port, important piece of information for uh, Canada heading into the close of the week is um, Canada CPI numbers. And you get that on Friday morning. Okay, consumer price index supposed to be at 1.4%. That's the hold. Uh, and retail sales are supposed to come in at 0 0.4 versus a contraction the previous month. So maybe some more event risk here heading to close the risk, uh, close of the week for dollar cat. All right, so that for real is through all the dollar majors. Let's jump into some of the commodities and equities here to close out the session. Crude. Man, this thing is so clean. Um, it, let's go back. <laughs> Getting too excited. Here's what the dollar. Uh, here's what crude looks like on the weekly charts. Okay, this is a huge level. We talked about it since the start of the year. Uh, if you guys remember, I was you know making fun of things about how much heat I was getting caught because we were talking about 60s when thing this thing was trading at 48. But basically, you know, into the start of the year, guys, if we take back what price action looked like, and this is just, you know, a drill in uh, for fun, this is what, you know, oops. This is what we looked like in the start of the year, right? That parallel converted, converged on 5960, 60 at the start of the year. So as we were opening the year, coming off of upslope, multi-year trend support, key 618 retracement, the 2017 low we close, you name it, it was here and the market reacted. Once we broke that median line, our basic focus was 55.50 and 59.60 into 60, right? Fast forward a couple of weeks, there's the rebound, there's the breach, there's the break of downtrend resistance, and here we are right on the mark. Literally the high guys came uh, six pips, uh, six cents shy. 59.55 was the high, I believe, in overnight trade. But my point being, look at this weekly chart with objectivity. Momentum has a clear momentum resistance trigger right there. Price is coming up against a huge resistance confluence, the 50% retracement of the entire 2018 range. The 2018 objective yearly open and upslope resistance. Remember that pitchfork we were in all throughout 2016, 2017, boom, we broke 2017, ripped. The median line of that same slope held the lows, the upper parallel right here. So look, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna get a pullback, this is the spot. The same respect, if we get a weekly close above 60, 60, man, 63, 68 is right on tap. 
That's at 618. I think you get that easy if we break here. The objective right now, the immediate focus, is that you're coming into resistance both in price, both in momentum, right? Weekly chart, guys, big picture from 1,000 feet up. Daily chart looks like this. Just a closer, whoops, just a closer look of what price is doing. Here's the 50% again. There's that yearly open again. A near-term slope from the decline off of last year's high caught the lows. Median line break saw acceleration. Test of support. Here's the upper parallel. Resistance. Resistance. The break. Acceleration. This is your first level of lateral resistance. Now, Objectively, this chart keeps the focus bullish above 55.53. That same level we were talking about on the way up, that caught resistance early February, it was a pivot break in early, in mid-February. Um, it's just below, or at this point, it's the 38.2 of that retracement, but more importantly, basic uh, parallel. This is slope resistance, a parallel extending that low converges right there on downslope resistance now support so even if this thing cracks lower and drops this low it's still a constructive trade but the risk i don't want to be holding longs here if you're holding longs this is where you take a little off the table wouldn't necessarily bail per se um, but i'd be cleaning up the majority of the position and getting defensive at least with a break even stop on whatever you have left um, so bullish invalidation 55.50 a top side breach uh, again you know let me bring that 618 back into focus here on the daily. Uh, you're looking for 6368, 6357. Ahead uh, of that, you know, maybe take a look at that 200 day moving average. 2015 high. Well, I'll leave it on there as a soft target, but you get the picture if we break higher. Here's the intraday chart. And this is what I uh, showed last night. So. Look at the turn, the way it reacted. As I was saying, you know, I was asking, so was that it? The 55, 59.55, did we just miss it by six pips and move lower? I don't know. The tell will be the break below the median line. If we get below that, and specifically 58.10, which was a nice target, um, I think you see it drop back towards 57.24. That's the monthly open. It would be a really nice spot to find support again for the resumption higher. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you could see a turn off of either of these levels, guys. So if you're not holding a short already, not nothing nothing I'd necessarily be like concerned about or that you missed the trade per se, but I'd be on the lookout. You know, if we get exhaustion into one of these two levels, I still think the risk is for a move lower before we resume. Yes, we're in an uptrend. Yes, it's bullish. Uh, yes, I do think crude does move higher, but we are at resistance, period both uptrend resistance and objective lateral resistance. Watch that 60 level as resistance here in crude. The upside is at risk well below. Questions, comments, concerns. Now, obviously, if the dollar tanks today, uh, watch this thing <laughs> rip higher. But I still wouldn't, wouldn't chase it, guys. It still could fail right here, even if the dollar rips and then start to give us the correction. Uh, we really need to make a move above 60 and close. And specifically, the weekly chart needs to close above 60 to get this thing on a validated breakout. Questions on crude. Going once. Going twice. That is six, seven, eight, nine is gold. Here's what gold looks like. So, I've kind of been kicking myself because, you know, objectively this thing came off support and we rebounded. And I was still thinking, it's trying to be a little clever, oh, it's going to make a new low first. We need to look for a deeper drop before we get long. I mean, it's been rallying. I still think that's the case. I don't know if I'm capitulating or if I'm being stubborn. Um, I still think the case is for a risk of a move lower in gold before resumption. Just because of the nature of this decline, guys, it was, it was a two-week decline that really took out a major or turned from basically the high we close of last year, right? And although it was a breakout type of trade, we rebounded right off support, it would still be within the confines of this breakout to come into 112.75s um, before moving higher. 
Now, that also happens to be the objective yearly opening range low. So I don't know if the market's quite going to give us that clean a move, unfortunately. So I just want to show you this chart in the weekly chart to show you kind of where the indecision is for me. This is the yearly opening range. And again, objectively, we're right in the middle of it. So, you, you know, from a favorability of a trading standpoint of a risk to reward, you're not at any major key turn to really try to trade against, uh, at least from the weekly chart. Here's the daily. All right. Um, nope, that's the 120. I'm lying. Here's the daily. <laughs> so, again, you know, how do you react here? The March opens 1313. You're trading just below that. A 618 of the drop converges on former channel support at 113.21. This is what would put me back on the resumptive path. Okay, so if we clear 1321, I think you start to look, okay, 1350, 1366, the same levels that we were thinking about on the initial breakout of that multi-year downtrend. If it fails at either of these, that's where I think the risk is for the flush out back towards, you know, whether we actually get the range lows or maybe we get that median line again, that's the risk in my humble opinion. So for crude, for gold rather, it's pretty much, you know, rip and fail into 1321 for that last drop, uh, or if it gets through 1321, again, don't fight it. I, I'd be looking for the resumptive move higher. Here's the intraday chart. And it's not the cleanest, okay? The only move that was 1310, or the only thing that was looking at, interesting to start of the week was the fact that 1310 was that 100% extension. Basically, just above that was last week's high. That's where we called this week's high and it pulled back. Watch this range, guys. This convergence now shifts back up to here, and it's the same level we just talked about in the daily chart, 1321. So even if we break the weekly opening range highs, the March open, it might be a decent play, guys, for a, you know 11 pip, 10 pip rally up higher. But I wouldn't get too full on, let's just, you know, buy gold and shut up unless we get through 1321. And again, forget what I'm saying. There's slope there. There's Fibonacci considerations there. There's a, you know, objective inflection point in price. That's going to be your breakout zone. Near term support, it's the 1300 level that we've been talking about for God knows how long at this point. I'm going to raise bullish in Val. Or you guys know the, know the picture. Basically, we break the weekly opening range low. Look for that drop towards key support. Let me clean this up a little bit for you. I don't need this anymore. Don't really need this anymore either, but... Bear with me. I just want to see what this looks like. Hmm. Let's work with this. It just popped out at me right now. I was staring at this thing. Um, you, you know, that pivot could actually be a nice pivot in and of itself. Support, support, break, acceleration, resistance. I'm going to leave that, that pink line there. But the slope looks interesting because it's highlighting levels we're watching as support anyway, i.e. the confluence region we just rebounded off of. On the upside, near term, there's this. March open, converges on the median line, which has been a decent pivot already. And then, you know, depending on where you are in time, whether it's going to be that 618 on that line or the 618 on the 75% line, you get the picture. Uh, but that's still the risk, okay? That's still the or that's still the level that needs to pop, let's say that, to validate resumption. Up until that, guys, this thing could be a larger correction. And let me just look at this also. One last thing. If it's an extension off the low. Whee! Look at that. Whoops even more consideration. So shift that from 1321 to 1321 slash 23, big zone.
All right. Fresh off the press, guys. Get it while it's hot. Feel free to take a snapshot of the chart if you need it. Quick reminder, again, this is all contingent on 13. If we break 13, we're neutral. Sub weekly opening range lows. So that means 1298, 13 essentially. And you're looking for a drop towards that 618 and lower. Okay. And again, the daily chart would suggest that you know there's there's a bigger risk for a larger washout. Uh, but that's sort of the focus here for gold. Okay, last but not least, here's the SPX, Pete. Sorry to make you wait so long. Um, here it is. So this is the levels we've been watching on the daily chart. I guess you know we can take a quick look at the SPX on – this is the log on the weekly chart. The only thing I want to highlight here is um, – you know, forget that 786 at this point uh, – is slope. Okay, so this slope that you see here is actually the 618% of the – Pitchfork. This is a pitchfork, the modified off the low from 2009 and 2011 on the weekly charts. A 138.2 Fibonacci extension of that range caught resistance, caught resistance, caught resistance, caught resistance, caught resistance. A little bit of a blow off there. Again, that 618 line, percent resistance, pivot, support, support, pivot, a little messy, resistance, resistance, support, support, support. Looks like resistance right now. Now, momentum on the weekly chart, just below 60. It's gonna fail, man. This is gonna be the spot in momentum. If it's gonna fail, this could be the spot in price. My point being also, Pete, that if it resolves higher, you're really just looking for 29.29. You're looking for last year's high close, the high week close. That's 29.29. Larger picture, right? Uh, and again, just as a disclaimer, I don't actively trade equities as much these days, so um, take it for what it's worth. That's the weekly chart. Here's the daily chart. Okay, a couple of levels I just mapped out earlier today, earlier this week. 28.62 is going to be that pivot that we made here last year. Obviously, 28.76, we talked about that. That's the opening range high from last year. Um, and here's that key region that we talked about as resistance. I think this is what your compliment was earlier, Pete. I appreciate that. Uh, it was a big level, right? It dropped, probed just below the 200-day moving average. Now it's probing just above it. This should now serve as support. My point being, below 28.12 is what we need at least to get back below a major and objective inflection range in price. It's not my opinion. Here's what price has done here. Every single time we've attempted it for the last, I don't know, six months, eight months, right? So just keep that in mind. Uh, on the daily chart. A settling below 28.12 would be encouraging for a larger decline. A move below monthly open, that's where the tell is, in my humble opinion. Uh, here's the intraday chart, Pete. Okay, and, um, you know, I leave this slope on on purpose because although we break, I tell you guys this stuff all the time, and sometimes it's just better to see it. Um, you know, this is a basic resistance slope that we've been following. Look at this. These two reference points are, everything came off these two reference points. Took a parallel, caught the two highs here, was perfect, spot on, spot on, spot on, spot on. Median line was all right, right? Not not, not, not too crazy, but decent, right? The lower parallel, we dribbled below it here. Look at the break. It accelerated drop, as you would hope to see, was resistance, but you didn't get any kickback. Once you broke back above it, has been support, has been support, has been support. So you know the levels, Pete. If we get back below that slope, all right, let's look for 2812, let's look for 2790. Um, you know, 2862 is going to be that pivot on the upside. It converges on, you know, that median line that we added, just a parallel. So if we spike higher, you know, that would be a level of which to look for resistance, somewhere at 2862 or 2876. I know it's a bigger range, but guys, it's big event risk. Keep in mind a couple of things. If the market foresees that the Fed is still looking for hikes they're still looking for normalization they're still looking to maintain the uh the, the cyclical runoff then that would be bearish period it'd be a, a tailwind for stocks it wouldn't necessarily say you're gonna you know that's it it's gonna cap the advance but definitely wouldn't necessarily want a, a larger reaction to the upside if there's any inclination or move or dot plot adjustment that really reaffirms what the market is saying is true that p would be bullish. That would be bullish. Because basically that says easy accommodative policy throughout the year, really nothing to worry about. 
yeah, there's the, ta the headwind risk of China, but at the end of the day, if you, know, you get that deal, then there's really nothing but smooth sailing because you got easy accommodative lax policy, uh, cheap money, and you know, an administration that's still rather friendly to business. Um, the devil's in the details, as I always say. If they come out and Powell starts to harp on this, um, you know, this China deal is, is actually a looming concern that the Fed is focused on, that might be bearish for equities, even if they do uh, reduce rates lower, because I would suggest that the Fed is seeing that there's actually a bigger problem on the horizon. There's so many ways you can play this, guys, and I don't want to confuse you guys <laughs> of a million possibilities, but you know the levels that are on point. DXY is basically you know, trading just above support into the release. Euro just below resistance into the release. Let's see how this pans out. Best of luck trading today, guys. I'm going to wrap it up. If you have any other questions, by the way, feel free to throw them on the message board now. Quick reminder, Jamie will be on board a little bit later in just about an hour and a half. And I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Cover the aftermath um, of the Fed and what implications, if any, that we get from today's release. Best of luck trading, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Cheers.